Alright everyone Maharib is here, and I was in the middle of creating a video on racism and colorism of Genshin Impact, but I just got across an even funnier information to give you guys. Because why not? This is something we have already noticed, and it will make a little bit of sense as well if you'll start thinking about it after the end of the video. And maybe this video will have a connection with my next video coming very soon, so subscribe because it's important for you. Now look at all the characters we are going to get in Natlon. Mavuka, Aurorun, Chaska, Iansan, Xylanin, Salali, Kinich, Mwalani, and Kachina. Since Capitano most likely won't be playable in Natlon, and you know, with each region, we get one playable Harbinger. This time, there are strong indications of Columbina being a playable Harbinger in Natlon. And Madame Ping will also be introduced as a playable character, maybe in next Lantern Rite Festival. And some sources suggested that there is room for one male character being playable, which was not appeared in the trailer. And we already know it's Zebalanke. With all this playable character cast for the whole version 5, only 3 characters are males, and 9 characters are females. Even if we remove Kachina and Ian San, females are still twice as many as males in this version. Looking at all the previously released characters, this game has 31 males with 46 females where I have already excluded 8 kids. Anyways the point is, female characters are already higher than male characters, then why are they releasing so many more female characters in this version? And here guys, we have the post of a suspicious person, who calls himself, 404. And he created a post that describes the internal situation of what Genshin is trying to achieve with this. So let's get started. I am 404. Appendix is the screenshot of last time leak. No idea what that means, but maybe they are just talking about this screenshot. This is the last time, so I won't use any coded words. I'm not here for leaking something big, but to throw some cold water. Okay, fine by me. Number 1. Natlon teaser is out. So I'm back to the community and I find out many people are waiting for Capitano. However, Capitano don't have a playable image. At least in 5.x he is not playable. Makes sense. We only saw his metal suit, and we haven't even seen his face. Maybe because it isn't even created by Hoyoverse. I think we need a Capitano face reveal at this point. Because well, we don't have any playable character without face. That's what they said here. Think about it, if he's playable, then why he's fully covered. All future possible male satellites are nearly extinct. Satellites means possible playable characters. For example, Skirk is a satellite, or Dainsleaf is a satellite. If he's really playable, he's gonna show a bit stuff to appetite you, doesn't he? Of course, makes sense. Number 2. No more 1 ratio 1 male to female limited characters. Come to think of it, if we strictly talk about limited 5 stars, we indeed have pretty close to 1 to 1 ratio with 17 females and 14 males. Females are still more, but now what they're saying is, not even 6 ratio 4 or 7 ratio 3. No male characters will be the core characters in a big version. Like, version 5.1 and 5.2 etc. You know, like Archon Quests. It's already quite obvious in the new teaser. Male to female ratio is 1 to 4. I think only Kinnich will have some significance in the story. Oron will only stick to being a right-hand man of Capitano, as I said in my previous video. So this whole Natlon war will just be a catfight between a bunch of women. And then this Gigachad will come to the ring and claim victory. That would be the whole Natlon Archon quest no pun intended. Initially, they don't want to publish more male characters since last year. Since no new blood enters, new blood means new players, and players are not increasing. So they decided to cut down male character numbers. A few male characters will be left for hope and illusion to tie the female players not to leave. The only males in the entire trailer are Kinnich and Ororon. So how many female players are actually interested in pulling for these two? Or we can have to see how Zebalanke turns out to be. According to the sources, he is a tall male character and will most likely be tan, like Kaya. Well, I would understand why female players will be interested in pulling for him at least. And since he is going to be equivalent to a Dragon Sovereign, like Nouvellet, he will be a meta character, so he is going to boost up the sales numbers. Hopefully, Otherwise we all know male characters don't generate a lot of revenue. Especially when they're tan. Varka and Pentalone's situation is still unknown. No one knows if they're even playable or not. Plus, I said Pyro Archon is Himiko, because she's white skin, red hair, yellow pupils, mature female. I don't know the voice actor so I thought she is Himiko. Because EI and May are not fully the same face size. Just a quick note that Mavuka's voice actor is actually married to Zhongli's voice actor. So it's a Ken and Tevat couple. I'm sure homos won't like this fact and start their usual immoral nonsense. And also, when a character is in different universe, they can have different body type, like EI and Mei, or Sila and Bronya from Honkai Star Rail are mature, 
But in Honkai Impact 3rd, they're young. Their entire story can be changed, their design and everything about them can be changed. You know what cannot be changed? Their skin color. Because how can they make a beautiful white Himiko so ugly and black? That's not the right thing to do. Anyways, that's the topic of my upcoming video. And in order to watch that video, you will need to have a thick skin. Videos that I create based on absolute facts tend to upset my viewers who are a little too frail to handle realities. That's why it's not easy for me to gain a lot of subscribers, and those who actually subscribe to me, they're absolute gigachads there is no doubt about it. That's why even in my Discord, only the real ones can stay. Frails just leave the moment they see I'm online in my Discord. So funny. And in my upcoming video, I'm gonna be brutal, so don't expect me to hold back. Those who actually know me, also know what kind of person I am. And I am not intending to change anytime soon just for the comfort of others. Anyways, after the teaser, I saw tons of players hoping 5-star male characters still having a placeholder even if they might not be appearing in teaser. I cannot bear the situation and come to throw cold water for the one last time. If you want to leave, just leave. Don't being scammed by Hoyoverse. I think the placeholder is for Zebelanke. I'm pretty sure he will be playable. If it's anyone else, then it would be fair to say that we were being scammed. But most likely that won't be the case in my opinion. Stuff related to revenue should give to the curly brackets. Let them know the power of male player game. Face hearts emoji. Here, these curly brackets possibly means incel players. And well, these games are mostly designed to target those kinds of audience. We can even see games like Aza Promilia where they don't even create male playable characters. They only target the audience they know is going to stay loyal to them and will give them stable income. Genshin on the other hand made itself pretty even, giving justice to both female and male players by releasing close to evenly matched gender distribution with their limited character cast. But now the times have changed. They got a lot of competition in their hands now. And because of their own dumb fuckeries, they don't have any loyal audience. That's why they are doing more and more quality of life and adding more and more stuff to keep players engaged in their own game. And now when players are starting to leave Genshin for other games like HSR, ZZZ, or WUA, etc., they are desperate for more players to join the game and start playing it. And they are resorting to different tactics to attract more players and hopefully turn back some of the old players who left the game. This is also one of the reasons why most of Natlon cast is white because they are trying to target their audience and trying to grab attention to new players from of course China and Japan etc. You know what they should do instead to attract more audience. Give better rewards, a tin pull log and event each patch, and add Labyrinth Warriors and Divine Ingenuity as endgame mods. One thing I still find good about Genshin is that they still keep things somewhat modest and don't sexualize their characters too much. And that's why I was not so much critical about Pyro Archon's design because even though it's not what everyone wanted, at least it covers her entire body. It's the same with Arlequino. Her design is so good, and people like it a lot. Those who say sexualization is everything, they're just wrong. March 7th new design is a fine example. People like that because she was covered up. Me personally, I think gender distribution and sexualization is not as significant for a game's success as its developers' teams noticing their player base and giving players what they actually want the most in the game. Like more in-game content and better rewards. Now don't get me wrong. I'm not saying adding more beautiful women instead of males won't do anything positive for the game. I'm just saying it won't be as big of a boost as opposed to something like adding a 10 pulls log in event every patch or adding new endgame that is actually good. Not like this idiotic Imaginarium theater. But still, as a 100% straight homophobe male without any shadow of a doubt, I am not complaining. The more girls a game has, the better. And you guys already know I am a Genshin shill. I am not leaving Genshin anyways. I mean how can I leave this game when Layla is here? Her adorable face is enough of a reason for me to never leave this game even after the end. And now I got another reason to keep playing the game in the form of Salali. And of course since Pyro Archon is also going to be released very soon, F2P players will obviously have to keep playing the game until they don't secure a copy of her, or at least get enough primos to guarantee her. But still, with the decline of Genshin's popularity, they are trying to do different experiments to see which of their experiments succeeds. And the things they're doing these days, they're only adding more flames to the fire, instead of doing things that they themselves 100% know are going to succeed. But what do you guys think? Do you think Genshin will regain its popularity just by releasing more waifus? And the waifus that are already a topic of nothing but racism at this point in the entire community. I think Genshin is doomed to fail unless the current staff retires. Nothing they try to do works, but only makes an already miserable situation even worse. And at the end of the video, I just want to say, hey Hoyoverse, you want your game to succeed, 
throw the current dev team out of the window and hire new and serious team that really takes care of their player base. See ya. Peace. Hi, I am Muharib's wife, Layla. My husband would be very happy if you leave a like, share, and subscribe to this channel. Don't forget to join our Discord server and he will see you in the comment section. Peace.